My name is Terry Gibbons and I'm a professor in the government department at the University of Texas at Austin and I'm a researcher in the area of European politics and so today I'm going to talk about Europe. The U.S. and Europe have basically been intertwined since World War II. And at the end of World War II, there were basically two superpowers left standing, the U.S. and Russia, and the Soviet Union at the time. And so what happened is the U.S. realized that they were going to need to uh, basically protect Europe, um, at, particularly after uh, uh, many Eastern European countries um, became part of the Soviet Union's um, sphere of influence. And so um, the U.S. decided to maintain military bases, but they also decided it was going to be important to develop an alliance. And so that's where the North Atlantic Treaty Organization was developed. And um, the U.S. is, of course, one of the leading partners in that, but it's mostly European countries as well as Canada and others to basically be there as mutual support. And particularly during the Cold War, when we were concerned about the Soviet Union potentially invading Europe, we were basically the, on the front lines there, making sure that Europe was protected. So although the U.S. Is, has a broad alliance with NATO, there's in particular a special relationship with the U.K., the United Kingdom. Because of our history with the U.K., we have long had a strong relationship with the different prime ministers. You, you can think about you know, Margaret Thatcher and uh, Tony Blair and, and now David Cameron have always had very strong relationships with U.S. presidents um, and also very strong trade relationships um, and also very strong military cooperation. So another component of the special relationship with Britain is that we have a, a very strong um, attachment to the monarchy in Britain. And so you'll often see a lot in the U.S. media about what's going on with Kate and William and their children and so on and so forth. And that's something that, you know, it's funny because, of course, the reason we are no longer a colony of the U.K. is because we wanted to break away from the monarchy. Um, but now we're very much enamored of the monarchy. Oh yeah, it's, it's very interesting um, how the newspapers there really do track things like uh, party politics, elections. Actually, I would say that they're more interested in our you know, political system than we are in theirs. We, we like to be interested in their monarchy and things like that, but I don't know how many people could even say who the prime minister of Britain is. That's David Cameron. But everybody knows who Barack Obama is. Everybody knows who John Boehner is. Everybody knows who Harry Reid is. You, know, you can just, you know, you can go through the, the top U.S. politicians and, you know, people there will know who they are because they're talked about a lot in the me media. One of the, the long historical issues with Ukraine is that it's been part of really in Russia's sphere of influence, but it wants to be part of Europe now. And so Crimea is a very important part of Ukraine where Russia keeps a lot of its navy bases. And so um, Russia, the, especially uh, President Putin, was concerned that if Ukraine started looking more towards Europe, that that might have some negative impact on Russia's military bases. And so um, Unfortunately, he decided to take over Crimea, and many people were surprised by that uh, in the, the U.S. government. Um, you know, they didn't expect that to happen, and so now there's also conflict going on in eastern Ukraine where Russian speakers um, who want to be more closely allied with Russia are in conflict with those who want to be uh, more closely allied with Europe, and so this is causing major issues. Ever since the European Union was created, and particularly since um, the uh, European Union has created the Euro and so on, um, there's been a lot of issues really between the U.S. and Europe about uh, their trade relationship. Sometimes we're in competition, but for the most part we're allies. So in times that we're in competition, it's because Europe is about as big as the U.S. when it comes to population and trade output and so on, and so we're the two biggest exporters and importers in the world and so we really um, you know there's sometimes issues about trade with other countries and trade with China um, there are issues over uh, privacy uh, when we're looking at software and and uh, uh, technology um, there's issues over um, you know even uh, uh, agricultural 
products and steel. Um, but what we're trying to do right now is to develop a trade relate a trade agreement with Europe called TTIP, and so those negotiations are ongoing. And so in Europe, the idea would be that they would develop a stronger trade relationship with the U.S. and be able to break down some of the the um, uh, tariffs and and other uh, uh, customs that uh, that are you know negatively impacting our trade with each other. So basically, what we want to do is break down the barriers to trade so that we can both benefit by increasing trade to each other. So that's going to be an, a very important discussion over the next few years. It's a, very important for the U.S. and Europe to um, you know, build these stronger connections. I think trade is one of those very important areas that will help uh, with the relationship going forward. I think it's really important to understand that Europe is our number one ally broadly, even though we have more of a special relationship with the UK. In general, Europe is our number one go-to whenever we have issues. So if you look at what's happening across the world with you know Russia, Syria, Afghanistan, things in Africa, we look first to Europe as our ally, as our most important partners. Even when President Obama is talking about uh, foreign policy, you know, he'll talk about our relationship with Europe. Um, and so it's important to, for us as Americans to understand that relationship and to know that um, these countries are very critical to understanding what's going on in the rest of the world.